Spirit is in us and, and we are born again, all of the idols, all of the, uh, the other lords, all of the gods of this world, they die within us. And just the same way that Jesus Christ cleaned out the, uh, the temple when he was doing his ministry twice, when he uh, turned over the table of the money changers and went in there and, and just completely demolished it and said, my, my, uh, my house will be called the house of prayer. My father's house will be called the house of prayer, but you've turned it into a den of robbers. Well, we are the church. And inside is a worshiping machine. God has created us like worshiping machines. And so through his Holy Spirit, he's visiting us and he's cleaning us with his Holy Spirit through perfection, through refinements. And so when he visits us, you see, the Bible, God said that wisdom is proven through the actions of her children. So once we receive this salvation, we showed in our walk. And all the gods of this world are dead to us. They, they are deceased, they shall not rise. For they have, for, 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 uh, therefore has you visited and destroyed them. Adopted children of Christ with the promise of redemption and the promise of life eternal living within us. A guarantee. We are now redeemed and we are no longer uh, uh, serving the gods of this world, but we are serving the God, Jesus Christ, our Savior, the God the Almighty, the Creator God. Uh, um, and made their memory to perish. This is speaking about the visitation destroyed them and made, this is also speaking about the second coming. They are dead, they shall not live, they are deceased, they shall not rise. Verse 15, Thou hast increased the nations, O Lord. You have increased the nation. You are glorified. This speaks about God's salvation. Increase the nation. He's gathered the remnant. He's gathered all His people. He has, uh, he has brought salvation to multitudes of people in all nations of the earth, in all four corners, in all different religions. He has multiplied His salvation throughout all nations and glorified himself. You have removed it far unto all the ends of the earth. In verse 16 continues, Lord, in trouble have they visited you. They poured out a prayer when the, your chastising was upon them. In, in tribulation, in trouble, have they visited you? All the people, all the nations, all four corners of the earth. That includes Daughter Zion, includes the Christians, includes everybody. All, they have all visited you. So in tribulation, during times of oppression, people cry out to God, send their hearts right to God. They have gone to God. You see, they have gone to God. They poured out, it's not really um, as we think it is by, by grace. The type of grace that does not require any, any work on our part. They poured out a prayer when your chastising was upon them. You see, it's, there's bad news, but there's good news. There's good news. It's good news. In verse 18, we have been with child, we have been in pain, we have as it were brought forth wind. We have not brought any deliverance on the earth, neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. The dead man shall live. This continues on in the resurrection. We have been with child, we have been in pain, we have had as it were brought forth wind, we have brought no deliverance. This is not the wind that Jesus Christ was speaking about, about born-again children. This is not that wind. This is a different wind. We brought forth wind. This is wind from the, from the, from the prince of, the, uh, of this world, the principalities of the air. Uh, not the wind of Jesus Christ. Now, in uh, continuing in Jeremiah, in... Uh, 
in Hosea 13, 13, The scriptures teach, The sorrows of a traveling woman shall come upon him. He is an unwise son, for he should not stay long in the place of the breaking forth of the children. Jesus Christ spoke about these birth pains. Just like a woman that is travailing, so shall be the deliverance of Israel. Now, you know, you mentioned here, you, you notice here that Jesus Christ is saying that a woman is in labor giving birth, but he is not coming out of the womb. The woman is giving birth, but at the time of deliverance, when stepping out of that womb, when it comes to become to being a new creature, to be transformed into Jesus, the children have stopped and they've ran back into Egypt, back into the world back into the idolatrous world under security of the Pharaoh, worshipping the Pharaoh, uh, hiding under the shadow of Egypt in a different spirit, in a spirit of darkness. That's why Jesus says, worshipping in the synagogue of Satan, the spirit of Satan. You cannot both share a, a cup of the demons and a cup of, the, uh, of, uh, of Christ. See, Jesus Christ makes it clear. You cannot bow your, down your knee to Baal and then swear by the Lord. You cannot serve both Satan and God. God demands worship and that worship is perfection. When you take communion, and this is a huge, huge reason why such a curse, such confusion. When you take communion and you're led to take communion by, by the priests, you are offering to God idolatry, you're offering pride, you're offering hatred, unforgiveness, all of these things. You see, this is how crucial it is when you take communion. Jesus Christ said, when you go and offer your gift on the altar, don't offer it if you have to for seek forgiveness, if, if you have to make amends with someone, if you owe money to someone, if you have to make something, straighten something out, whether you have to, uh, seek forgiveness for, some, for something that you said, or if you need to uh, uh, just straighten any, any situation out that needs to be straightened out, don't offer the altar. Because when you what he's talking about is communion. When you're drinking the cup of the Lord, you're sharing in his death. You're offering your, yourself to God. And so if there's anything in your heart that is not pure, it's an abomination. Jesus Christ is not accepting that offering. Satan is accepting that offering. He's taking that offering and then he's bringing it to, to the Lord and he's, and he's accusing you. He's accusing us. And Jesus Christ is really working hard in his rest for our salvation. Jesus Christ is a God of mercy and a God of love goes beyond, beyond, uh, beyond our ability to reason. Now in, uh, so in, uh, uh, continuing further in Micah 4, verse 10, Scriptures say, be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion. Talking to the Christians, Christian children, all of Israel, all of Israel. Uh, physical, spiritual, scattered in all four corners of the earth. Like a woman in travail, for now shall go, shall go, now shall thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field, out of the security of the Pharaoh out of your securities of this world, into the field, before your Lord, before God, with, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a wilderness. God says in this word, if you cannot survive in your own backyard, how will you ever survive in the thickets of the Jordan? This is why we need to be perfected now before this happens. This is extremely urgent. <laughs> 